Hi, I'm Laura Stevenson and you're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from your favorite site, Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with Laura Stevenson. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> you are now in Toronto for CMW. I don't know if you've been here too long or not, but how is everything treating you at the moment? Fine. Uh, my van is like 20, 30 feet away. I just got out of it and I went inside the building for a little bit and now I'm here. So I haven't really been outside of the van in Toronto today. But we are here but it's and nice. we thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody seems really nice so far. And this is actually is nice. the, the last day of this big tour you were on. You were just doing a national tour across America. Mm -hmm. How did that treat you? What were those shows like? It was good. We were on tour with our friends uh, Chris Farron um, and this band called Crying from New York. And it was really, really good. Everybody became very good friends and now we're going to be missing them. And So we had our last show with them two days ago in Boston. And so now we're like doing one more show without our buddies. So we're sad. And then it's time of. for a lot of sleep, I'm assuming. Not even really very much because we're leaving for... Europe in 10 days Wow. so like barely any sleep I wasn't looking at those tour dates until today in the van when I got bored because I didn't want to get like overwhelmed yeah. like oh my god a whole other tour <laughs> and I started looking at them today and I was like oh my god I'm really in for it I think I'll be okay <laughs> how do you prep yourself for a tour like that have you know Ugh. just the packing in itself can sometimes really stress people out so is there a routine you go through um I just throw, kind of throw everything in the bag and then just go do I like any of these clothes and then I say no not really and then I take most of it out and then I just keep mostly just the underpants <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's packing it's a good method <laughs> yeah well on the music front uh, Cockshire came out last year and it was a very spontaneous record a lot of it was recorded live very raw what was that method like going into the studio and almost the opposite of the way you used to record not really trying to worry about anything yeah yeah it was it was cool I wanted to have like a really positive experience recording because like if I feel like I toil over something too much or there's like any sort of negative air in the room, I can only hear that on the recordings and then I just don't like listening to my records. So I just wanted to kind of like document these songs in a positive atmosphere and it was great. <laughs> it was really great. Well, what's next on the music front for you? Um, I have a whole other record written and it's a lot more quiet, personal songs because cocksure I kind of, Cockshire was like all our other records where it was just like quiet song, loud song, quiet song, loud song, and then I just scrapped all of that, all the quiet stuff. So then I was just like, let's just release a record of like bangers and then I'll do like a quiet one afterwards, which is kind of weird because I feel like you should do quiet then loud, but <laughs> whatever. So I think it'll be good. I'm excited to really sit down with it after this European tour. And do you think you might take that same live approach on the next record? I don't know. I don't really know anything right now. It's all just skeletons, but I kind of want to keep them as like sparse and simple as possible. Uh, but there might be like strings, and I'm sure there will be strings. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> There's well, always strings. In our first interview, you told me how during your live show, some funny stuff can go down, whether it's playing half a set with your fly down oh, or yeah. falling off stage. So have you had anything happen like that on the national tour? Uh, this past tour, yeah, I played one whole set with my fly open. <laughs> and our bass player played two sets with his fly Oh, open. so he beat you on that one. And I feel like I must have stumbled somewhere along the line. I'm sure I did. I'm well, not very uh, quick on my feet. And I got these shoes. They I look like, like those shoes. Thank you. They look like Vans, but they're actually orthopedic shoes ah, for I elderly ladies. The, co the company's called Grasshoppers. And uh, Shout out trying to get a sponsorship. <laughs> But I feel like I'm a little more stable when I wear these babies. I like the look of them a lot. Yeah, they just look like Vans. Yeah. They got like a little tiny little like, they slope upwards in the back. That's the telltale sign of an orthopedic shoe, but that's <laughs> our little secret. I like seeing on your Facebook page how the band interest section is just snacks. That's uh, the only thing there. So what are some of your favorite snacks? I couldn't see that and not ask. Right now I'm going through kind of a Fig Newton's phase. Uh beef jerky usually but like the really I spend way too much money on beef jerky that's kind of my thing because like it's like ten dollars all the time and then if you want a nice one it's like twelve eleven ninety nine twelve dollars so just beef jerky Newton's 
You guys have Newtons here, right? Fig Newtons? Yeah. Yeah. Great snacks. <laughs> Peanuts. Mostly just chips. I guess every snack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just keep the naming line. them off. I love that. <laughs> every food possible I will eat. I saw the other day you were really excited about getting a George Foreman. You oh. were so pumped about that. Do you like to cook insane. a lot? Uh, yeah, and I have this George Foreman grill that I got when I was like 18 years old, and I'm 32, <laughs> so that's like, it's a really old George Foreman grill, and it still works, but usually when I use it, like, my apartment fills with smoke, so then I tweeted about it, like, oh, I still use a George Foreman grill, and then I played a show in New York City, and someone came up to me, and they were like, I work for George Foreman grills, Oh, do you want a George Foreman grill, the newest model, state of the art? Just got it yesterday. Wow. It's like, it's insane. It's so awesome. It makes waffles. It has ceramic plates and you can put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> I haven't used it yet, but I That's took it all apart amazing. and like, it was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Grasshopper's George Foreman Grill. What other companies can I <laughs> give a shout out to? Big Newton's. Nabisco. <laughs> right? I think it's a Nabisco product. Well, in our, first <laughs> in our first interview, you told me how you're absolutely terrified of both the attic and basement in your older house that you grew up in. Oh, yeah. Well, you didn't tell me why. So why is that the case? Oh, okay. Uh, well, so the basement, my sister told me Freddie lives in, Kruger. Okay. Um, sometimes, well, my mom used to make, she was a teeth, she was like a teeth maker. She made porcelain teeth, a dental ceramist, okay. dental technician. So she worked from home. There was a really loud compressor that would go off all the time when she was using the sandblaster. It's kind of a boring story. But the compressor would go off and me and my sister were playing like Mario downstairs. And then my sister, I was always Luigi of course. And uh, my sister would run up the stairs, yell Freddy's home while this really booming loud compressor <laughs> was going off, lock the door and leave me in the basement. Wow. It was so scary. And then the attic she said Jason lived in. You had both Freddy and Jason. Both living inside wow. my childhood home. <laughs> So it was pretty terrifying. I don't like to be in either of those areas of my house still. I don't blame you after hearing that story. I just like run up the stairs when I'm in the basement. It's really scary. I'm <laughs> 32, just turned it. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that story. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> to wrap things up today, is there anything you want to say to all of your fans who are going to be viewing the interview? Um, hi, thank you so much for watching this. <laughs> Sorry, I was weird. But I am having a nice day, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you for sitting down with here us. Here, in Toronto. In Toronto. Ontario. Yes, it is. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and remember to, everyone viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time.